Good morning and welcome to the morning worship service here at the Bremen Church of Christ. We have several visitors with us today. We're so glad that you decided to be with us. We'd ask you to please take just a moment, fill out an attendance card that you'll find on the back of the pew that's in front of you. Pass that to the center aisle. We'll collect that at the close of our service so that we may have a record of your visit with us today. We meet every Sunday morning, 9 o'clock for Bible study, 10 o'clock morning worship, 6 o'clock Sunday evening, 7 o'clock on Wednesday for midweek Bible study. Brother Martin Higley will lead our song service this morning, first song. 577 will be our first song if you wish to turn to that and be ready at the appropriate time, 577. Brother Jacob Stevenson will lead our minds in prayer at the appropriate time. Johnny McDaniel will deliver the message to us today. Brother Sidney is not feeling well, and um, we're certainly glad to have Brother Johnny with us this morning to deliver the sermon. Brother Richard Smallwood will conduct our closing prayer at the appropriate time. Next Sunday is the annual Georgia Agape Thanksgiving Day Appeal, and we've been giving out some of these envelopes, but I'll be standing at the rear of the auditorium after the service this morning for those who did not get that for next Sunday. But again, this is something that we do every year for support of the Georgia Agape Thanksgiving Day Appeal, which is their largest fundraiser for the adoption agency that we support. Any other questions, feel free to ask myself or any of the other elders. Concerning those that are on our prayer list, Lou Overby uh, is still, I don't see her here this morning, she is still at home and undergoing some physical therapy, recovering from a recent fall that she experienced. Pam Wilkes is to have tests this coming week, or this week, Tuesday, I believe. James Oakes is here with us this morning and apparently is doing well from eye surgery last week. Joan Thurman, also here with us this morning, received a good report from her recent tests and may not have to have surgery, which is excellent news. We're certainly glad to have with us Sister Sue Gross, and she is with us, glowing from yet another grandbaby of late. We express our sympathy to Pam Wilkes and family in the passing of her mother-in-law, Novi Wilkes, the funeral is today at 3 o'clock at Tabernacle Baptist Church Building in Carrollton. Again, the funeral today, 3 o'clock, Tabernacle Baptist Church Building in Carrollton. Funeral for Novi Wilkes, mother-in-law of Pam. Louise Smith, also here with us this morning, but she's not feeling well. We would ask you to continue to remember her and her family in prayer as she is experiencing some health difficulties. As we also mentioned earlier, Sidney and both Ann, his wife, are not feeling well this morning and are at home. Eloise Bell also not feeling well today. Chris Hodges is on the injured reserve list now. He's had some uh, knee surgery. He's laid up for a little while, but hopefully he will be able to uh, improve shortly. But again, Chris Hodges at home today recovering from recent knee surgery. Brothers Keepers events, I wish to bring to your attention, there's two groups that are meeting today or tonight after our evening service. Group 2 uh, meets tonight uh, at the house next door. Finger Foods are the fair there. Group 4 also meets tonight in the Fellowship Hall. There's a sign-up list in the foyer. Please sign that list and uh, let us know who all is coming from Group 4, again, after evening service in the Fellowship Hall. Group 3 plans to meet next Sunday, the 21st, at the home of the Pattersons after the evening service. Also, the elders wish to meet with the deacons uh, this afternoon at 4.30. This afternoon at 4.30, we will have a meeting. Would you bow with me, please? Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy high and holy name. We're so thankful for the many blessings of life that you shower upon us for the opportunity we have this side of eternity to meet with those of like precious faith and study another portion of thy word. May we do so acceptably in thy sight so that you'll be pleased with our effort and we'll be edified. Father, we're prayerful, prayerful of many of these that we've asked a specific interest in our prayer this morning that have been mentioned. We're also mindful of several others that we may not know about that are not feeling well that wish to be here that could not be. Father, continue to watch over and forgive us when we fail this so that we may stand pure and clean in thy sight. Be with Brother Martin as he leads our song service this morning. Brother Johnny, as he breaks unto us the bread of life. 
May it bring forth fruit to thy name's honor and glory. Continue to watch over and forgive us, for this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 577, let's stand and sing. Have you a heart that's weary, tending a love of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the burden you bear? Do you know? supper will be number 393. <clears throat> 
from 1 Corinthians 10, 16 through 18. The cup of blessings which we bless, is it not a communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a communion of the body of Christ? Seeing that we who are many are one bread, one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, have not they that eat the sacrifices communion with the altar? Let us pray. Our most gracious, kind, and loving Heavenly Father, as we have just read, dear Lord, you're commanding us to be one as we partake of this bread and of this cup. May each of us, dear Father, examine ourselves and partake of this bread in remembrance of the love that your Son showed for each of us here through his death and in pain and suffering. Forgive us, dear Father, when we fail thee, for that is not our desire. Continue us now in thy kingdom and in thy service. All these things now we pray in Christ's name. Amen. anyone in the serving of the bread. Let's give thanks for the cup. Dear God, we thank you for the blood that flowed from Calvary's cross. We pray at this time as we partake of this fruit of the vine that our minds might go back to the scene of the cross and remember the pain and the suffering and finally the death of Jesus Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
serving of the fruit of the vine. If we overlooked you, if you'll raise your hand, we'll come back at this time. This completes the Lord's Supper. We're now given an opportunity to give back as we've been blessed. We will pray, please. Our most gracious, kind, loving Heavenly Father, again, we're thankful, dear Lord, for all of our many blessings, our health, our well-being. We ask, dear Father, now that each of us examine ourselves and give back that portion which we feel that you so richly deserve. All these things now we pray in Christ's name. Amen. with 
Gracious God, thank you for this beautiful day that you've allowed us. Thank you for this time of worship. We ask, Lord, that you continue with us as we sing these songs, praise to your name, as we bring our petitions to you in prayer, as we listen to thy word. Help us, Lord, to clear our minds of all the trivial matters of the world that sometimes weigh us down and burden us as we approach you in worship. Help us to pay attention to the things that are being taught. Help us to be able to make an application in our lives so that we may be the best example that we can be, so that we may follow in your son's example, his perfect example for us. We thank you so much for your son his willingness to come to earth and die for us, sinful people that make the same mistakes over and over again. Help us not to do those things and not to make those same mistakes and help us to abstain from sin in any way that we can. And thank you for this Lord's Supper that we've observed and thank you for what it means to us and the opportunity of salvation through Jesus' death 
We ask that you continue with us as we worship you. Please continue to be with Brother Martin as he leads us in our worship and song. And please be with Brother Johnny as he prepares to preach to us from your word. All these things we ask in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. We mark number 514. We're saying this is an imitation hymn after the lesson this morning. 514. <clears throat> Stand and turn number 508. 508. Let every heart rejoice and sing, let choral anthems rise, the aged men and children bring to God your sacrifice, for he is good, the Lord is good, and kind all all his ways, with songs and all. pleasure to be here with you this morning. Thankful for the opportunity for us to share some thoughts together just for a few minutes, if you would, as we are preparing to see the presentation above my head on the screen. If you would go ahead and be turning in your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 1, and the key text this morning is going to be verses 18 to 20 with emphasis on um, verse 19 specifically and it reads this charge I commit to you son Timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare of course we have Paul the great apostle speaking to his son in the faith Timothy here and encouraging him in the way that he would uh, conduct himself and his ministry uh, when Paul was away from him Verse 19, having faith and a good conscience. Faith and a good conscience. Hold on to that, Paul says. Then he says, which some have rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. And then he references two of those specifically, of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So Paul says, don't let your life or your faith be a shipwreck. Stand fast. Remember what you were taught. Wage the good warfare so that you will have a good conscience and a good faith as you uh, execute your ministry. And of course, the sad example of these two who have fallen away. This morning, I wanted to key in on that idea of shipwreck and look at that uh, and define it and then see if we can uh, use this analogy that Paul has given us uh, perhaps to give us some information to help us uh, be warned and prepared in our lives that we do not suffer the same fate as Hymenaeus and Alexander. Let's look at types of shipwreck. First there is the idea of being set adrift. Being set adrift, this would be on the ship, in the ocean, without any control. And you would be then at the mercy of the sea. Uh, we have, at least looking in from the outside, kind of a, uh, well, I wouldn't call it funny. That would almost be mean to say. But these people who, who spent money last week on a, uh, some of them their dream vacation on a cruise ship that went out of San Diego and uh, not far offshore, 
but far enough offshore that they had a fire in the engine room and the, and the ship was just, just, just at the mercy of the sea in that case. Uh, and some of the stories that we're hearing uh, from that, it, it, if, if there had been bad weather in that area, that might have been a much more serious situation. But you can imagine being set adrift at sea with no control and the, uh, the desperation that might follow. Then there is to be run aground. Mistakes of navigation or desperation will cause the ship to be stuck in shallow water and at the mercy of the waves. You know, we have an example of this from the life of Paul. In Acts 27, uh, when Paul was a prisoner of the Roman uh, and under, under the guard of a Roman centurion, was on a ship sailing for Rome, a terrible storm, or tempest as it's called in the Bible, probably a hurricane force storm, uh, caused uh, havoc on that journey, and eventually they began throwing all the, uh, the tackle and everything overboard to make the ship lighter so that it wouldn't sink, and eventually they spotted land. Didn't know where they were, but the, the, the strategy then was to, to aim the ship at the land just to get them closer, uh, and it was with, with no control, they ran the ship aground, and it says that the prow of the ship, the front of the ship, stuck fast in the ground, and then the stern began to be broken up by the waves. So when, when you run aground, uh, you may be close to ground, close to dry land, but you're still at the mercy of the waves beating on the ship. And then there is to be thrown overboard. Um, in this case, the ship is lost, and there are people in the water at sea with no vessel to carry them. Um, a great example of this is from history Near the end of World War II, July 30th, 1945, the story is told of the USS Indianapolis, which was a Navy cruiser that was on a very, very top secret mission to deliver uh, important parts that would be used in the assembly of the, the bomb, the bomb, the Hiroshima bomb, the atomic bomb that was dropped on Japan and hastened uh, the end of World War II and saved many lives. Well, the secret nature of that journey uh, kept the, the radio silence and no communication whatsoever between the USS Indianapolis um, and uh, the, the people who would have been watching over that ship from shore. So when a, on their journey home from the island of Tinian in the South Pacific when a, J a Japanese submarine uh, fired two torpedoes into the side of the USS Indianapolis, that ship with 1,180 crew members went down in 12 minutes. 300 or so went down with the ship and about 800 men went into the water. Four days they suffered through that at the uh, exposure to the elements and sharks that were prevalent in those waters. Four days later and only because a plane happened to fly overhead and saw them, of the 1180 men on that ship, 316 survived. They were overboard, lost at sea without a ship. And then finally, a total loss. This past week was the um, 35th anniversary of the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, which many of us, maybe most of us, have heard of, and which gave me the idea for this lesson. Um, that was a... Uh, a ship that sailed in the Great Lakes uh, in the Northeast. And it left port one day with 26,000 tons of iron ore for the steel mills up in that area. And crossing Lake Superior was caught in a very sudden storm. They called those storms uh, the Witches of November. And all of a sudden, that ship disappeared from radar, and with it, all the ship and 29 crew members sank to the bottom of Lake Superior only 17 miles from Whitefish Bay where they could have found safe harbor. In penning um, a ballad about that song, Gordon Lightfoot, in, the, in a verse toward the end of the song, said these words, Does anyone know where the love of God goes when the waves turn the minutes to hours? So this morning, let's think of shipwreck and let's go back to that analogy that Paul has given us about spiritual shipwreck. 
This is also known as apostasy, falling away from the truth of God. As we've said, Paul analogizes this uh, for us using the phrase concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck back in 1 Timothy 1 verse 20. Well, Paul himself would know something about being shipwrecked for in uh, 2 Corinthians 11.25 in giving uh, kind of a list of persecutions and ill faith that he has suffered, he talks about having been shipwrecked three times and spending one night and one day in the deep. Like a shipwreck, apostasy is tragic and dangerous. It is potentially spiritually deadly and sadly it is very avoidable. Yet some fall into it anyway. Tragic when we see a brother or sister in Christ stray away from the truth of God. It's dangerous for them spiritually potentially spiritually deadly if they are not able to be saved from that and it is avoidable. Let's talk this morning about avoiding spiritual shipwreck. To do that I think we need to first identify what the causes of this tragedy are. Number one, and we can put this one at the top and, and everything that will follow will, will follow under this, that Satan himself of course is the cause of apostasy or, or a loss of faith turning away from the truth. Luke 22, 3 says, Then Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. Judas made a decision to, to follow what Satan had tempted him with, but Satan entered him and had a part to play in that. And then in Luke 22, 31, it says, and the Lord said to Simon, 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 indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. And as we discussed a few weeks ago, one of these men was able to overcome that influence of Satan and one of them was not. Second cause of spiritual shipwreck is that of false teachers. Here Paul, speaking to the Ephesian elders and, and warning them, so to speak, says to them, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Here a warning saying, be on watch, be on guard. Savage wolves is how these people are described. We've heard the um, use of of, of, of this description of a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Well, here is a savage wolf come in among you. The, the term also from among yourselves in the next verse leads us to understand that these wolves can come even from those in our number. And we need to always be on guard for what is being taught and preached and propagated in our churches. Uh, and, and the elders have a responsibility for that. We as Christians need to be on guard for it as well. For they will rise up speaking perverse things, drawing people away. Not away to God, but away to themselves. A, a very uh, important warning here from Paul to the elders. Continuing to know the causes, we can see that another cause is perversion of those scriptures. Sort of alluded to by Paul, this in 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 5, where Paul says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready, in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and teaching, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears. They will heap up for themselves teachers and will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, Paul says to Timothy. Again, a warning to Timothy here that, and, and in the present tense, Paul is talking about at Ephesus, uh, when you're working there, 
this is going to happen. You're going to have people who, who will, will get tired of what you have to say, will get tired of your speaking the words of God, will get tired of hearing uh, the truth, and will begin turning aside to fables, to things that aren't true, to things that are made up. And the reason they will do this is because they will have itching ears. They will not want to hear any more the truth. You be watchful in all things. Endure this. Do the work of an evangelist. Paul would have said, stand fast for the truth. and Do not let people get away with perverting the Scriptures. Another of the causes, love of the world. And perhaps one of the saddest verses in Scripture here, Demas has forsaken me, forsaken me having loved this present world. What do we know about Demas in this short verse? And it's by, as far as the words go, is not a lot of information. But we can learn a lot from this small verse. Number one, we can learn that at some point Demas was faithful not only to Paul but to Christ. And that at some point, because of the influence of the world, Demas left his focus or turned his focus away from the spiritual world and from his home, his eventual home in heaven and allowed his focus to turn back to the present world and he loved what he saw there. So he forsook Paul and was not able to give Paul aid in this case if you read it in context but turned away. Very, very sad. Love of the present world can cause us to fall into spiritual shipwreck, loss of faith or apostasy. And then as well, spiritual blindness can cause us to do the same. Here Paul is speaking to the Jewish leaders in Rome after that faithful voyage where he was shipwrecked at Malta. He eventually made it to Rome. And at some point they gathered some of the Jewish leaders around him and he is speaking to them. And this is the result. As some were persuaded, verse 24 of, I'm sorry, Acts 28, beginning in, beginning in verse 24. Some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word or had said this final thing to them. And what he said was from the, the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our father, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand. Seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears hard of hearing, their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. These people turned a blind eye, uh, or blinded themselves spiritually to what Paul was saying, these Jews in Rome. Some of them believed, some of them did not. Disagreeing, they just left altogether. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. Perhaps those who did believe found it too inconvenient to obey the truth that Paul was preaching to them. So we need to know the causes of spiritual shipwreck. And if we know the causes and note them, then we should also know the defenses against those causes. Defense number one is faithful Vigilance, a verse that we're very familiar with. Be watchful, be vigilant, be sober, for your adversary, the devil, uh, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It's important here that we, we understand this, this language of seeking whom he may devour because what Satan is going to do is he's going to walk about like this roaring lion preparing to pounce on the most... Um, available and defenseless target. In, if we put this into the context of the wild, and we've seen those shows on television, we see what happens. Uh, the predator will try and, and cut out the weak and the young and those perhaps who are not paying attention. And those are the ones that will suffer death at the, the teeth of the predator. Seeking whom he may devour means that if we allow ourselves to uh, be distracted and turned aside to the things of this world, Satan will have a better chance 
of taking us down. Know the defenses, and one of those defenses is to be faithfully vigilant all the time, looking out for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Second cause is spiritual growth, or second defense is spiritual growth. What we mean by this is to continually be growing in Christ so that we don't uh, become distracted. We're, we're, we're growing as we learn and, and, and worship God and understand through faith the things that He does for us. We continue to grow in our faith. I've made the point before that if we're, we're following uh, 1 Peter 2.21, the example of Christ, that we, will, we should always be striving to grow because if our example is a perfect one, we will never reach that. But God calls us to continually try to. So spiritual growth is a defense against spiritual shipwreck. But also for this reason, reason giving all diligence, add, key word there, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If these things are yours, if you are striving to have these, these spiritual gifts in your life, if you are striving to add these things as you go along, then you will be neither barren nor unfruitful. You will not fall in spiritual shipwreck or apostasy because you're going to be concentrating on growing in Christ. Nine, for he who lacks these things is, is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Can you imagine forgetting, taking for granted the fact that our sins have been taken away, especially when we think about the manner in which God was able to do that by sacrificing his only son. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an interest, entrance will be supplied to you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To avoid spiritual shipwreck, we need to be faithful, vigilant, and we need to continue growing in Christ as we go along on our voyage of life. Continuing and knowing the defenses, and finally this morning with the defenses, we need to understand that the best defense against a loss of faith is to be in the Word, to have it a part of your life and have it directing your life, studying and understanding and meditating upon that which we learn day in, day out, week in, week out. The psalmist says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's a defense. If I carry with me the word of God and hide it in my heart, and that's not to say that we're hiding it as a matter of keeping it from others. The idea of hiding here is the precious nature of God's word and that it is so precious that we want to keep it uh, hidden and safe so that we can use it when we're tempted to fall away or do wrong. Hide it in my heart that I might not sin against you. And then also with regard to God's word, in 2 Timothy 3, 13 to 17, Paul says, Evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. We talked about this morning in our class that the Apostle Paul learned directly from Christ and the Holy Spirit, and he in turn taught others. So Timothy, learning from Paul, was learning directly from God, and he needed to keep that in mind. Verse 15, And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Timothy had the, the advantage of having a mother and grandmother, Lois and uh, Eunice, that taught him from God's Word. And then he had the advantage of having Paul who was able to teach him as well. Paul says, remember all of those things. All Scripture, all that is Scripture, is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And we can add here, of course, prepared to defend against spiritual loss 
know the causes and understand the defenses against spiritual shipwreck, apostasy, loss of faith, falling away, however you would like to describe that. Now, let us, in conclusion this morning, go back to the ships that we talked about at the beginning of the lesson. Number one, we talked about to be set adrift, and if we, if, if we can, let's think of our life as a ship here as we close in our, in our voyage, voyage through life in our determination to meet our des destination, which is eternal salvation in Christ. And that we have others with us on that journey. But for a time, let us think of ourselves as, as uh, that ship. We can be at some times set adrift. And I would equate this to somebody who perhaps has, has learned and, and known the scriptures, somebody who has been uh, baptized, become a Christian, but at some point just kind of allowed themselves to drift away, lose contact with the Word of God and maybe even their brothers and sisters in Christ. This may even be someone that is, sits among us every day, every week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, but they're not in touch with the Word of God and, and not, not having those defenses um, reinforced, just adrift on the ocean and at the mercy of the sea. Then we have someone who perhaps has run aground, maybe having this same story carried a little farther, has gone back into the world and, 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 and come to a, a bottom, so to speak, and the world begins to overwhelm like those waves begin to break up the back of the ship. That person is in danger and needs to be helped. And then a sad case when somebody is overboard, somebody who has completely lost touch with the church, with the Word of God, with their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, has no relationship anymore, no active relationship with God. They were once faithful, but they've fallen away. They are adrift in the ocean, lost at sea, perhaps getting ready to sink themselves, and they need help too. All of these three types of ships or situations have one thing in common. At this point, they're not totally lost. Life has not ended, and there is still hope. And as we, we saw in the, the, the examples that we cited at the beginning, even in the example where Paul and, and the ship that he was on was run aground and broken up by the waves, no one lost their life. They were saved. Some were saved on the USS Indianapolis. And then, of course, we had the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald where the ship and the crew were all lost. And those faithful words from the song, does anyone know where the love of God goes when the waves turn the minutes to hours. Well, the truth is, the love of God doesn't go anywhere. We go away from it. He is still there to save us if we will be saved. The love of God remains right where it was, there for us to take advantage of. It is everlasting. And He has prepared the way for us to be saved. And He's done that through His Son, Jesus Christ. So the happy ending to these stories, if total loss is not the case, would be safe harbor. And we've seen so many wonderful cases of somebody being rescued at sea. We as Christians can rescue souls lost at sea as well if we will look out for each other and be on guard for these things that we have talked about and knowing the causes and the defenses. We can help save others from this loss. Perhaps this morning you know somebody who needs help. We'll help them. Perhaps this morning you may be in one of these categories that we've talked about. Adrift, so to speak, spiritually, or run aground where you're overwhelmed by the world. Maybe you're at sea and overboard and, and on the brink of spiritual destruction. Well, again, all of those situations have one thing in common. It's not too late. But 
A total loss eventually will happen. From a physical perspective, at some point we will all die. We know that that is appointed to us. Hebrews tells us that. And if, it, if that doesn't happen before the, the, the world ends and Christ returns, uh, that will be the end. But there will be an end. And we need to be prepared for it. If you find yourself in this situation or know somebody that is, you can respond this morning and react. If we need to help you personally or if you have not taken advantage of the safe harbor of the everlasting love of God by obeying His gospel, then we can help you with that too. Please come as we stand and sing. blessings you have given us this day. We're thankful for this lesson that has been brought by Johnny. May we take it to our hearts, Heavenly Father, and make us stronger Christians. Please watch over us, Heavenly Father, and keep us safe until we come again to worship you. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs>